Hello everybody, it's Rob from In-House Solutions, and today we're going to look at what's new in Mastercam 2025. New to the Dynamic Mail and Area Mail tool paths is the ability to add in finished passes within the operation. In previous versions of Mastercam, many users using those tool paths knew that the tool paths would effectively and efficiently remove large amounts of material, but then it would possibly not give the, a great result on the wall and we had to come back and finish that with like a, a contour or something similar to clean up those walls. So let's look at the parameters of those tool paths and see how we can add in that finished tool path now. So I've got a dynamic mill tool path and I'm just cleaning out this pocket. You can see by my cut it has the normal dynamic motion. So let's visit the parameters page. And then under the tree, I have a branch that I can specify my finished passes. So I can specify the number of passes, my spacing, uh, whatever I want it to be. And if I want spring passes, I can add those in. I can change my feed rates and my spindle speeds. And I also can choose my cut direction or my cut compensation type. So I'm going to leave those at default. And let's just accept that. We'll let this tool path regenerate. There we go. So now I've created a new tool path. I can see it's got my dynamic motion, but it also has another path that goes completely around the part and cleans up those walls. And I can see by my entry motion here that it looks like it's coming right down in the center of that. So let's go back in and see if we can correct that. So under our finish pass tree, I do have a drop down to include in, lead in, and lead outs for that pass. So all the settings in here are pretty standard to what you're used to for a 2D tool path. We can use our perpendicular, tangent, or profile ramps. And then we can adjust our, our lengths and our radius, arc sweep, stuff like that, that, that we want to use for both the entry and exit. So I'm going to leave those at default and choose OK to that and let that one regenerate. So there we go. So now I have my dynamic motion. I have that profile outside. And then you can see I have my nice lead in and lead out motion to give me a better finish on that wall. So I want to look at one more thing within this tool path. And we're going to focus on uh, this portion of the operation. It's doing this in this area here. And if I, if I analyze this, um, this is eight mil wide. So let's, let's go back in. And this time I'm going to use a little wider tool. So I'm going to use a six mil tool. So I'm not going to change anything else right now. I'm just going to let it regenerate with that six mil tool. So now I can see the tool pass regenerated, but it doesn't quite go all the way in here. So we're going to explore why this is happening. So let's go back into our parameters. So I'm using that 6 mil on the 8 mil area. It's 8 mil wide. So that gives me 2 mil of clearance right now. So if I go into my finished passes, I'm using a half mil spacing on each side. So that still gives me a millimeter of clearance, but it's not going in there. It won't allow that in. So looking back at the cut parameters, uh, this, this style of tool path uses a minimum tool path radius. So it uses a radius. In this case, I've specified 10%, which is 0.6 of a mil. It uses that radius to enter into the cut and exit out of the cut. So it has to have like a minimum, which is this is pretty uh, pretty small, so uh, it it still works, but once we factor that in, another 0.6 per side, then we can see why that, that operation isn't cutting into there. So if we go back into our finished passes, I can see I have this minimum or minimize burial selected, and this is turned on by default. And what this is doing is it's... Um, 
keeping the tool in a safe environment. So if it has to enter into material or cut material that's basically on both sides of the, the, the cutter, it's going to utilize this minimized burial option to avoid those cuts. So let's turn that off right now and see what it's doing. So I push OK. Let that regenerate. There we go. So now I can see my finish pass motion on either side of this cut, but it's not, it's not doing that dynamic motion. So let's enter into um, a verify and see what this, what will happen. So now I've got my part up here. I'm in the in the verify, and it's it's gone through that dynamic motion. What it can cut. Now it's trying to cut the finish passes within here. And if I go through here, you can see that it's going to cut out all this material in that top area. And maybe cut out too much of that. Too much, too much of an aggressive cut on that tool. So utilizing the minimized burial will avoid those situations where it may be cutting too much material and engaging too much for the um, the tool path, and then the operator will have to come back and maybe do a different different process on that to finish that up to give it that correct motion and possible correct cut, correct the cut within there. So that's what's new for MasterCam 2025.